what we're going to be doing today is going over a brand new program that's going to honor schools that do a great job of teaching the electoral process. And this is called the Wet, Red, White, and Blue Schools Program. And it is co-sponsored by the Connecticut State Department of Education. Our commissioner, um, Commissioner Wenzel, is, is very enthusiastic about this. And the other co-sponsor is the Secretary of State's office. And I can tell you that Denise Merrill is very excited about the program as well. So um, what we're going to do is, in essence, and I don't know that this is going to take a lot of time to make, but we're going to go through the program. And why we call the webinars, we really want your critical feedback on this. I mean, this is the work of, of this group, and it's also the work of the teacher committee. But if you have, as you watch this, from whatever perspective you're coming from, if you have ways that you could see to make this better, what, what little twist can we do to make it better? If you have ideas on that, please um, write, them in, write them in either to the chat box or um, for my wife, um, bring them in and write them afterwards. But we really are interested in your feedback as we go. So, um, Moriah uh, Moriarty and Tina Prakash from the, the Secretary of State's office. Are going to be this is going to be doing this next part. So take it away. Great, thanks, Steve. Um, my name is Mariah Moriarty. I'm here at the Secretary of State's office, and I am the point person on all of the Secretary's civic projects. So I'm looking forward to working with everybody on this new program. Um, basically, a little history of it, the Red, White, and Blue School program was conceived between um, a meeting between, like Steve said, the Commissioner of Education and the Secretary. They wanted to create some sort of recognition program that would recognize schools from all over the state for their civic engagement, and um, also a lot of schools are currently working on a great civics project, and we just want to be able to bring that statewide. And so every year there's going to be a different theme to just fully, fully be able to show how broad the scope of civics actually is, that it's not just about elections. However, this year in 2016, the theme is the electoral process. Steve, on to the next slide. Okay, so the timeline here, um, this is basically a timeline for all of the schools or the classrooms. Um, but we wanted to show everyone here on the webinar what all the schools would um, be following. Um, we want to, we want to be able to get the program out and about into the schools or at least let all of the school, the teachers, begin to learn about it before as they start planning their summer break and, um, and their plans for the next school year. So with, we should be, we're planning on launching it within the next week or so um, with a formal announcement with the secretary and with the commissioner. So the, after that happens in, in June, um, summer professional development for the teachers begins, and we expect that our small working groups that we have established um, between the secretary and the uh, department would provide an additional webinar or additional information for the teachers to be able to give them some further insight if they have any questions um, or thoughts on the, pro the program. Um, so earlier this year, the Secretary of State released the 2016 Civic Health Index, and it's been a goal of our agency to discuss the state of our civic health at every opportunity that we can. And so that being said, in June, the beginning of June, there is a, um, on June 9th, there is a event at the Old State House um, honoring um, I can't remember the exact title of it, but basically what we're asking for is any event that you have um, with any of the groups that you work with, if you could let them know if we, so we could be able to kind of work together to collaborate on 
getting the uh, the new program out and about and having everybody learn about it and spread the word so we can increase participation as much as possible. Um, in August, there's a superintendent's meeting and the commissioner will be able to also address all the superintendents and talk about the program after their support and encourage them to ask all their schools and their communities to participate. Then through August of 2016 to January, the schools will work on their program. And then at the end February and March, they will submit them to us. And we, in May, the school would be, you know, the, those who have completed the process and have earned the enough um, points, I guess, or, you know, score, the highest score will be recognized as a red, white, and blue school. So um, we're really hoping this project um, has a very, can be an exciting time and have a really exciting focus for the entire school and not just for, you know, one classroom. We really want everyone to become engaged. And now Tina is going to talk about um, the interdisciplinary project. Hi, um, so I'm Tina Prakash. I work in the Secretary of State's office. I've worked with Secretary Merrill for about eight years now. And um, one of the things I've done over the years is help on several of these um, civic education projects. So um, there are several aspects that qualify a school as a red, white, and blue school. And Steve is gonna get into all six of the criteria shortly. But um, before that, I just wanna talk to you about the interdisciplinary aspect. Um, so we're asking schools to, you know, look beyond the social studies when they think about civic education in the classroom. And we've got some examples of how a school might do that. So in, um, the, in English or language arts, you might do um, a writing and getting speeches exercise. Um, you can do policy research papers, letters to the editor. Um, in math, there's, you know, there's lots of numbers involved in elections, as many of you know. We've got polling data that's out there, um, electoral college analysis. Some of you have probably seen, like on the New York Times, they've got that electoral college um, map that you can play with and make your own projections for how you think it might shake out on election night. Um, there's turnout statistics and, and things like that. For science, um, there's actually a lot of, you know, issues that are going on right now in, in national politics that are related to science. And so you can have your students research those issues on environment, on chemicals and consumer products, things like that. Um, and then, let's see, so art, you've got graphic design, you can do ads, you can do signs and posters. Um, now you can do these either for candidates or for issue-related things, um, and you can do these to help promote the whole school activities, which is another um, one of the six criteria, which we'll get into in, in a minute. Um, as far as music, of course, you can do some patriotic theme performances. Um, but then you can also have students examine the use of music in campaigns as well. Um, so we're also hoping um, that one of the reasons we've invited you to the webinar is to learn about the project and give us suggestions for more um, of these types of activities. So if you do think of any other interdisciplinary activities, please just let Steve or Mariah know, and we'll be giving them the contact giving you the contact information at the end of the webinar. Um, We'll also have this and other resources available on our website. So um, the next thing I just want to talk about is how do partners fit into the picture? Um, what, are we, what are we telling you about this for? Um, some of the ways we think you could help the schools to participate and become red, white, and blue schools are, um, well, for, for starters, a lot of the things that I mentioned on the previous slide are, are great proper partnership opportunities. Um, the League of Women Voters or another organization might want to um, help sponsor an actual candidate forum or debate for the students. Um, if not with um, some of the local candidates, maybe the students can run a mock presidential debate and have the students play the uh, presidential candidates. Um, of course, there's school like mock elections. Um, but beyond that, you can, you can sort of bring students through the whole process. You can do mock voter registration for students who aren't old enough to do actual voter registration. Um, you can set up within the school different polling places so they see what that looks like. Um, and then, of course, um, there's, you can do an actual voter registration drive, or um, there are some schools where they've done a student-created um, voter education website, so you can go with that as well. 
Um, I wanted to let Mariah talk about one of the next criteria, the out of school activity. Okay, so this slide here provides some activities that school can part, schools can participate outside of the classroom, which would then also kind of engage more people and hopefully provide the entire school um, participation. And a lot of them, as Tina said, are a great way that you, our partners, could help out as well. So, for example, some of the things that she also mentioned, you know, sponsoring candidate forums, having the voter registration drive. For, um, if any of the students have any interest in volunteering on a campaign, um, several of you on here would be able to provide good guidance on how to do that, um, how to reach out to campaigns, or how to um, train any of the people who are interested in becoming poll workers or any other job that, you know, on election day, there's a lot of tasks that need to be um, completed that, um, that everybody needs to help out on. Um, and, you know, we, we assume that the classrooms, the teachers, and the students are obviously going to think of creative projects, but any additional help that any of you participating here in this webinar could think of. Um, that would just allow their projects to be that much more comprehensive. Um, and also at the end of this slide, you know, there's a bunch of books here that several of you might actually recognize um, and that they can use for their projects, especially for, you know, some of the younger schools, because, you know, this is going to be more not just the upper grades, it's also going to be a K through, um, it's basically K through 12 for the entire um, school. So um, also another out of school activity is I was just at a meeting yesterday. We have the kid governor, which is from my hometown of East Hartford, but um, that would be an a great opportunity uh, for the old state house to be involved. That would be an entire school project um, to work on an entire campaign. So that was, is a great opportunity as well. And it's great for um, a lot of fifth graders to be involved with. Um, and so Steve's going to get into now a little bit more of the specifics of the program and the technical aspects of it. So go ahead, Steve. These are the things that we're looking for when we do, um, when we're going to be looking at how the schools are doing. And you can see that there's more for grades 6 to 12 than there is for grades K to 5. And um, just real quickly, I mean, I don't want to insult you. You can read the rubrics. But what we're looking for is six, six big categories. Um, first off, how well is social studies, how innovative is, is the election being taught in social studies classes? Or in classes that's in, in, in elementary school, this would probably be social studies and language arts integration. But how innovative are, are schools being in, in their social studies classes in teaching this? The second category is, you know, how, how much are schools reaching out to community partners? and school partners. What things are they doing in the community to promote the election and the issues of the election or teaching the election or something of this nature? The third category is we want to encourage that the election not just be taught election and electoral process, not just be taught in social studies, classes, but that they be taught in school lines. As was explained in a previous slide, there's things that an English teacher can do, a science teacher can do, a, a, a music teacher can do. So that's a third criteria we're looking at. The fourth criteria is how deeply does the school and in their classes, how deeply do students investigate the electoral process? Is it just a superficial looking at the electoral system and the, elect and the candidates? Or do we really, are our teachers really having students dig a little deeper and looking at issues and the impact of these issues on daily life. The fifth criteria is use of media. How are schools using media in an innovative way, 
both to learn about the election and to learn about candidates, but also to present their findings about the election and about candidates. So innovative use of media we thought was another thing. And the, the last thing, and, and you notice we put this as a higher category for high school and, and middle school than elementary school, um, the use of extracurricular clubs. You notice for elementary school it's only 5%, but because many elementary schools don't have much access to this, but we really think are there, you know, are there clubs at school? In, in a high school, is there a current events club or a current issues club or another type of club that we want to we want to celebrate schools that are doing that as well. So the six categories that we would be we would be looking at schools through the rubrics which you've got a copy of is again to repeat myself how innovative is the teaching of so of the elections how much do the schools use the community partners are they reaching out to the League of Women Voters or other similar organizations. How much is the whole school involved in the teaching of the elections? How deeply do the schools get into the electoral process? How effectively is media used to teach the elections and communicate student results? And how much are extracurricular clubs and or activities involved um, when doing this? So we thought, I mean, we could have gone farther, we could have gone less. But our teaching group thought here's six major categories, and we thought that these were six, the, probably the best six ways that we could evaluate how well schools were teaching the electoral process. And it was, as was said at the beginning, if you have comments or suggestions, please write them into the chat box, and we'll try to answer them. But um, this is the, so you have in front of you right here. And in a more detailed form in the rubric that, you, that I sent to you, you have the way that schools are going to be evaluated uh, in, this, in this. And it's not really a competition because it's not a red, white, and blue schools competition because it's not one or two schools that are getting this. Our, our approach is going to be that if, we, if there's 500 schools in Connecticut that can meet the rubric and, and do these things well, well, then 500 schools are going to get this. If there's five schools, you know, I hope it's closer to 500 than five. But what we really want to do is commemorate and, and give recognition to all schools that are met meeting this criteria and teaching the election well. And next one, I think, Tina, you're up. Yep. Um, so um, why did we invite you onto this webinar today? And again, thank you for joining us. Um, Secretary Merrill and those of us at, that work for the Secretary and at the Board of Education and Commissioner also all have a lot of respect for you and your organizations. And we think you might be interested in, in helping with this project. So, um, you know, the way we've already mentioned is partnering with your local schools. Um, besides partnering with your local schools, um, you can also help us to spread the word, which is sort of the phase that we're in right now, trying to get schools um, to know about the program and how to sign up and everything. So if you've got mailing lists, if you have a newsletter, you'd be willing to just put a little blurb about the program in. Um, if you have an event that's going on, as I mentioned earlier, um, if you can, um, you know, met, publicize this at your event, um, if it's appropriate and you want us to come do a quick presentation about it, just contact Mariah or Steve. Um, we're also asking you if you want to be a partner organization um, to add your logo to our Red, White, and Blue Schools website. We will have a partner page and we can put your logo up and then link to your website. And then um, and you would, if you would like to, we'd also like you to reciprocate and share our logo on your website, which would then link to ours. Um, and then, of course, um, we do think that this program is um, a very low overhead program, um, but we do anticipate a few minor costs. So if anyone is able and willing to help to pay some of those minor costs, they would be related to recognizing the school to qualify and um, the event that's at the end. Um, so, again, we're going to send you the link to our website, and we'll also be sending you, I believe, I'll let Steve talk about some other materials. 
and um, we encourage you to reach out to us and um, let us know any feedback you've got. And um, I'm going to turn it over to Steve now. Could, could at this point, could I ask if anyone has feedback on this? Could you, would you mind sharing it with us if you have it if you wish to, if you could put right in, even if it's in the chat box, if you can put job, if you think there's any things we could improve about this, um, any and all comments that you have, if you could share them now or sometime in the future, now would be better. It would be great. So please don't hesitate now. If you want to write in a question or a comment, now would be the right time to do that. Tina, could, while we're waiting for that, could I ask you how is this going to be publicly rolled out to your knowledge? Could you tell folks um, about that? Sure, absolutely. I'm wondering if you would just put up the next slide so that those who don't have any questions or comments right now will know where to send them um, in the future. Um, thank you very much. So, yeah, so we will stay on as long as needed to answer any questions or to um, take some feedback. We would really appreciate that. Um, but if you think of something later on, again, we'll be emailing you our website and um, the contact information for the Secretary of State is Mariah whose email address is here, and Stephen, whose email address is here as well. Um, as far as how we're going to be rolling out the project, uh, like as Steve mentioned, in the next week or so, we're going to be setting up a press conference. We really want to sort of get this out um, into the public before the um, school year ends, you know, while students are still in school and teachers are still focusing on um, what's going on in the classroom. So. Um, I see we have a question coming up. Steve, did you want to um, mention anything? I'm sorry, uh, Tina? Oh, I'm sorry. I just saw some typing while I was speaking. I didn't know if you had... Um... Yeah, um, I just um, just want to thank um, Sally Whipple from the Old State House. Sally says, I think this is a great idea. The Old State House will be happy to promote it with our Kid Governor Program. And I'm sure the Connecticut Humanities will help promote it on its website. Um, you were saying, Mariah or Tina, how Kid Governor, or what was, what were you saying? Kid Governor is a great example of what kids could do at an elementary level. That's what one of. I know we had that discussion earlier today. Yeah, I, I mentioned it. I, I think that it would be a great example. Um, and I actually talked to her yesterday, and she was saying how she was able to use all of the students in her classroom, and she could reach out to other grades as well to kind of learn what it's like to run a campaign, how to learn about an issue, how it's like to reach out. I mean, just all the aspects of it. I don't think people necessarily always think that, you know, someone in the fifth grade would be able to really put together an entire, you know, political campaign. And several schools, I mean, there was a lot of um, entries clearly Proved, us, proved me all wrong by putting together very well put together campaigns. Could I ask um, Greg Frank, are you on? He's, he's apparently not. Um, it's Gloria from the League of Women Voters, and her comment is, um, looks like a great project and fits nicely with the emphasis on partnering with schools, especially high schools, that is emerging in the League, the League of Women Voters' long-range plans. Count us in. We'll look forward to finding ways we can contribute. Great, Gloria. Um, thank you. Um, many schools I know, um, or, or, or some schools, already do voter registration drives. and. You know, I know a couple schools that that have been involved in the planning of that said that that's a very appropriate high school level of you know reaching out beyond the classroom, cooperating with community partners for them. So that's something that will happen at the high school level for sure. Um, you, you know, I think really where where folks, you know, where I think we're going to need 
some ideas, and, and again, they, they may not come to you right now, but if they come to you later, please email us. From the community partner app, how can schools partner with, how can community partners and schools work together? I mean, because I, I think there's schools, and I've talked to teachers in, in schools, who would like to partner with community with you know would, would like to partner up with community organizations but really don't know where to start with that so if anybody maybe not on the chat box but or whenever if you could forward any ideas you have on how schools might do that it would be greatly appreciated that's a great idea Steve I just wanted to um, respond to a couple of the um, comments that have been coming in um, Alyssa says that she really likes the fact that one of the criteria involves making the election meaningful for students for sure. teaching the election. This program allows for them to get involved. I know Alyssa has voice, but do you want to talk about that, Alyssa? Yeah, Okay, while we're waiting for Alyssa, I'll go on to the next Alyssa, one. Can um, you hear us? Alyssa, are you on? Oh, I can talk? Go ahead. You're, I have unmuted you, so go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, I didn't realize I could talk. I'm sorry. Um, no, I just like that when sometimes with social studies instructions, I've noticed that just from observing classrooms that it's very boring and very uninvolved. They just sit there, read a chapter of a book, and then maybe fill out a worksheet. So to have something where they'll remember this lesson, they'll remember this activity years from now, like the activities that I remember from my experience in elementary schools are the ones where I was involved in them and not just, and they were actually had meaning to me. I could do something I wanted to do. They were the ones that most interested me versus something that where I just had to fill out a worksheet. Thank you. That's no, that's great. That's um, you know, that's exactly. I was about to cite back to you, and I thought I'm just going to say this out loud so everyone hears it. You know, that's exactly one of the things that we're going for in this is to really make it a holistic approach to teaching civics because civics is a part of our lives in in many ways that people don't even think about. Um, I just also wanted to read Paul Scaff's comment. Paul is from CTN, of course, the Connecticut Network, and um, he um, also sends his um, congratulations. He thinks this sounds great. Um, he is interested in um, possibly linking to our um, website and on their civic toolbox section of their website. So that's really great news, and I, I want to thank you, Paul. Um, Steve, did you have anything else you wanted to add? I, I think um, where, where I, I think where schools are going to need a little where schools are going to need a little work to be encouraged on this, I would love to have some K-5 schools involved in this. And um, I'm going to work to try to get to encourage some of them. But, um, you know, because that's a group, I mean, let's be totally honest. If we want kids to know the electoral process and be aware of it, um, you know, we don't want to start that in sixth grade or something like that, that that should start at the elementary school level. And so I'm, I think it's important. I mean, I'm going to, to repeat myself, I'm going to try to reach out to some elementary schools and see and try to hook them up into this project. So, Mariah, did you have anything else to add before we sign off for the day? No, I, I think we've really covered everything. I just think that I, I can't wait to hear what uh, people's suggestions are, that some things that maybe we haven't thought of. Um, and I know we've tried to be all encompassing. But um, it'd be great to, to find out where, where we're going to go in the next couple of weeks as we launch this. Um, Thank you. Well, go ahead, yeah, Steve. I was just going to turn it over to you. Yeah, Gloria has asked if um, we could get the slides, the PowerPoint, to her. And yeah, we're going to do two things. I'm going to email to everybody a copy of this presentation. So if you wanted to listen this to this again for any reason, you could do that. But if anybody just wants the PowerPoint, I will email that to you separately as well. So if anybody for any reason wanted just to see the PowerPoint, 
Um, Gloria, I got your request. If anybody else wants that, I could do that for them as well. So Mariah and Tina, I guess we're we're done for the day. We are done for the day. Thanks for and helping put everything together and for everybody for joining us. And thank you. And we will certainly be in touch with this. And thanks everybody for their time. Uh, have a good afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye, everyone. Bye.